I have been banging on about 2026 for almost as long as this show has been a thing, which, by the way, is just about two years exactly. A couple of weeks from now, it'll be two years. And to be sure, I am so thankful to all of my loyal subscribers. Yeah, that's you and the Patreon members for helping me close in on 25,000 subscribers in such a short time. You know, one such member of the listening group was surprised the other day to find out I also have a very major presence on X, where I post dozens of times on most days. Well, find me there. So look me up. The information is down in the description. 2026 is going to be a true enigma when it comes to any kind of accurate forecasting. I mean, it's hard enough when you just have regular product lines that are continuing along and you can kind of say, well, this is the expectations we have for increases. But we are entering into completely uncharted waters on so many different products that it's only fair to approach this subject with a claim to be providing a very, very conservative estimate. I mean, we're only starting the age of cyber cabs, only beginning with robo-taxis next year. And then Optimus, it'll be the first year for Optimus. And then there's Semi that'll be starting to ramp in a major way in 2026. Moreover, we have no real handle on how many mega factories might be up and running by then. We know that there'll be two, but will it be three or four? They could start two next week, three, four next week, or a week after that, or a month after now, and still have plenty of opportunity to be making many, many, many mega packs out of new factories in 2026. So anyway, with all of that introduction, let me get into the numbers and show you what I'm thinking is going to happen in 2026. So let's begin with the major category. It'll still be the major category then in terms of gross profit in 2026, and that is human-driven cars and trucks. That's going to be a totally new category for the world, right? I'm going to figure that we'll be at about 1.7 million model Ys. That would be a slight increase over the all-time high of last year. And my expectations of 2025 might see an increase in model Ys, and then maybe another small increase in 2026. But remember, we're going to be moving into the age of robo-taxis. We're going to be moving into an age where there will be lots more of these 2.5 sold. So I'm just going to say that for that year, 1.7 million, we'll be looking at uh, 0.4 million model 3s, kind of the same analysis there, about a million model 2.5s. Okay, that would be the new one, and maybe that'll be an unboxed version by then, I don't really care. It will just be this smaller, less expensive, more affordable model. Maybe that'll be way more than a million, but remember, this is a conservative, very, very bare, not even a bare, a conservative, a conservative analysis. The Model S, X, maybe the Roadster, maybe that's 100,000. And then 300,000 Cybertrucks. No, that's not what I'm doing there. On, on uh, uh, I'm sorry, three, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, 300,000 cyber trucks. That is correct. Okay. For a total of 3.5 million. Now for semi trucks, I needed to make that a separate line because I think we'll probably sell about 30,000 cyber trucks. You can see here the 30,000 that we'll, we'll make and sell, but they're five times the profit of other cars and trucks. So that's why I've got that down as 0.15 million, 150,000. Uh, cyber truck, semi trucks. So grand total, add that together, 3.65 million vehicles at a $5,000 profit per vehicle before FSD. Okay. And also that doesn't count reg credits. I'm not going to figure out, I'm not going to do anything with reg credits in this entire thing. So a profit, therefore, of 18.25 billion before FSD are reg credits. All right. So there's my beginning, my beginning point. The reg credits are just going to be um, cherry on the top, not going to figure it in at all in this particular round. Okay. Now then we have energy storage and solar. I'm going to assume that one more factory will come online. Maybe the maybe the beginning of the year, maybe the middle of the year, whatever. But I'm going to give it a total. And maybe it'll just be better production out of the two existings. But I think overall, conservatively, 120 gigawatt hours uh, from Megapacks. And I've done the analysis uh, elsewhere previously. I think this is conservative because I'm figuring it might come down just a bit from where we are now. Right now, it's really closer to about $8 million. 
uh, but uh, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, $8 million per gigawatt hour. Um, but I'm going to go with 7.5 instead. Um, and so that would give us about $9 billion. And that's a lot less than you might, uh, you know, hear uh, Brian White, uh, who, who uh, will be on, I mean, sorry, Brian Wong, later today, uh, will be providing his analysis. I think he thinks that energy will be a lot more than this in terms of profit. Um, but that's, but again, I'm trying to be super conservative. And then about three gigawatts from Powerwall, Powerwalls, and that'll be a, more like a billion dollars. That is not correct there. Let me just change that real quick. That'd be 0 0.1 billion per gigawatt hour or 3 billion total. I'm not gonna be able to, am I gonna be able to change this? Anyway, we'll, we'll just, <laughs> whoa, maybe I can't change it. No, I can't change it. Okay, so we're not gonna change it right now. So let's just go ahead. You assume I'm putting a point one there uh, because I had changed this other one earlier and I forgot to change that one. Okay, solar might be a loss. Whether it's a profit, a little profit, a little loss, I think is inconsequential in this total picture. So we're talking about 12 billion total from energy storage. FSD profit. Well, the profit per car or truck in this particular case is almost impossible to know. Currently, we're selling FSD for about $8,000 or $100 per month on subscriptions. But who knows what Tesla is going to sell these for, um, you know, on cars, on semi-trucks. We don't know what they're going to charge. We have no idea what they're going to charge, whether it's going to be a different amount when, when it's used as part of a business and a, a completely different amount for those people who are just going to have it for personal use. I mean, we're really talking something we just don't have a clue. <laughs> and so, um, and then for those who aren't a subscription, you can only get about twelve hundred per year out of all that. Anyway, here's my number: <laughs> three point six five million vehicles times eight thousand. I'm just going to uh, and thirty three percent take rate worldwide. Okay, that's my, that's my that's my deal. So three point six five new vehicles sold that year, eight thousand per. So that would be on on uh, semi trucks five times as much. Okay. But remember, all of this is so loosey goosey. So we're just going to go up with nine billion. I think it might be a lot more than this, but because the take rate might be way more than thirty three percent, Tesla may be charging a lot more for people in commercial uh, applications than eight thousand. Uh, semi truck might be a lot more than forty thousand. Maybe a lot, lot more than forty thousand. So, and three point six five million vehicles. That's only the ones that will be on the road that uh, that be manufactured that year, uh, and sold that year. That doesn't count the ones that are already on the road that'll be paying the hundred dollars a month. So, there's a whole lot of stuff here, a whole lot of moving numbers. Um, I'm going with nine billion. Okay, how do you like the number? Let me know in the comments below if you like these numbers, you hate these numbers. Robo taxi. Once again, we're gonna have to completely guess. I mean, it's just really guessing. In a previous video, I've shown where in Western nations, the profit for Tesla for RoboTaxi in the early days might be as high as 65,000 on their own fleet. That's on their own fleet. So in this exercise, I'm gonna cut that number in half. I'm gonna go with actually 30,000. We will also assume that no Tesla own, Tesla's not gonna own any fleet in Asia. You've heard Brian Wong probably, if you've listened to his videos, He's talking about the fact that there's a, a whole bunch of fleet folks over in Asia that will probably be buying literally hundreds of thousands of vehicles for Tesla to put into their fleets. For customer-owned vehicles in the U.S. and Europe, I came to a profit of 9000 per deployed vehicle. Again, that was on another video. You can go watch it. Once again, I'm going to cut that more than in half and use 4000 Super conservative. I will be shocked if Tesla could realize more than $1,000 per year per vehicle for those deployed in Asia. All right, so now we have to pick a number for deployed taxis in 2026. I'm going to stick with my early assumption, 5% of personal vehicles. So that might be, oops, that might be around, I'm so sorry, this is not going to fit. That might be around 100,000 cars in uh, Europe and uh and so um, that's that's a hard number to know. Um, um, so a hundred thousand. I'm sorry. 
So we're going to add another 100,000 for fleets in the US and Europe, 250,000 for fleets in Asia. And finally, I'm going to guess that Tesla would deploy 50,000 of their own fleet, 50,000 of their own fleet. Now, if that number changes dramatically, like 100,000 or 200,000, which is entirely possible, then it's going to change everything. So where do I come up with? I come up with 200,000 non-Tesla 200, non -Tesla taxis in the US and Europe at 4,000 each, or move my, move my little thing out of the way here, $800 million for that, 250,000 in Asia at $1,000 each, that is 250 million. We got uh, uh, 50,000 Tesla owned at 30,000 each is 1.5 billion total from RoboTaxi in 2026, 2.55 billion. All right, so there you go. Let me know what you think. My assumptions on Optimus are based on common sense. Silly idea. I continue to t believe that Tesla will not, they will take into consideration shareholders' interest because if they don't, that's just not right. And so they will not sell any Optimi for less than $200,000 or rent them for less than $60,000 per year net profit after depreciation. Now, after that's depreciation, you know, repairs, whatever they have to do, they're going to net out $60,000 per year on every Optimus. If, even if they only cost them $5,000 each, they're still going to rent them out for $60,000 because they're worth it. Okay. My, and that's just, think of NVIDIA. NVIDIA's got... 80% margins on those hardware items because why? Because they can. And I think Tesla should, should do the same thing. My analysis will be based on the lease proposition. And I'm going to cut that in half since they will building, they'll be building from zero that year. So in the, in the first half of the year, they're going to have X. So I'm, I'm going with 50,000 for the year, total deployed. But it, you know it's going to be slowly ramping up. So taking halfway. They'll get half of the revenues that they might otherwise get that year uh, as they ramp. So half of that uh, 60,000 per year times the uh, the times the 50,000 total units. All right. So what do we end up with? Oh, I'm sorry. We didn't do services and others. I believe that number will be starting to really jam up. The fleet will be getting much larger, creating more insurance business, more income from superchargers, and other charging businesses and more repairs and maintenance at service centers. There will also be a substantial increase in energy arbitrage, retail energy sales, and other similar small efforts. Therefore, I'm going to assume an almost doubling over 2025 to $3 billion in services and other. All right, we add it all up. Auto and trucks, 18.25, FSD, 9 billion, energy, 12 billion, um, Robotaxi, 2.55 billion, Optimus, 3 billion, services and others, 3 billion for a total gross profit of 47.73. Now you take that gross profit and you take out the overhead, you add in other income, mostly interest, and that might be way off on that one. Total income before tax, 34, income tax, 7, subtract, you get net income of 27.25, total outstanding shares that year. Might go up, might go down, but we're going to just keep the current number three, almost 0.2 billion shares, giving us an $8.52 per share EPS compared to my guesstimate for 2025, which is around half of that, around $4.20, $4.25. So doubling of the earnings per share. That's what Tesla should be doing, right? Especially with these new products. Anyway, from there, that would be a forward PE Take your choice. You want to use 80 times that. That's 640, 650, 60. You want to use 90. You know, okay. Or you want to use 100. Then it would be, you know, 800, you know, $850 this year. You're getting close to uh, Brian Wong's number of 1,000. So somewhere in that range, as people begin to see that this is the kind of revenue and the kind of earnings that can be earned in 2025, that's why my PT for the end of the year is still $700, give or take. I'm loving to hear what you have to say about this. Uh, we've got, uh, you know, um, <laughs> 2026 is going to be the year. And after that, it just explodes. Okay, after that, the robotaxi numbers explode. The Optimus numbers explode. The car numbers continue to grow nicely. FSD numbers probably continue to grow really nicely. 
uh, but the numbers just explode, to, assuming. Now, this is an assumption. I have no question about Optimus. That's not even a remote question. They'll sell all they make, and they'll sell all they make for pretty much whatever they want to charge up to about $200,000 or 60000 a year. Maybe more than 60000 a year would be fair, but I think that's everybody has come to that number. I don't know why. If you've got four shifts, it's worth way more than 60000 a year. If you have one shift, it's definitely worth about 60, maybe a little less. So that's the number, okay? That's the rough number, 60,000. But people have come at that at a whole bunch of different angles. Um, and so that's the number I'm going to stick with for now. But the uh, potential, the TAM on robots is 7 billion, 21 billion. I don't know. So many that it's not even worth thinking about. The TAM on energy storage, we know that that's massive. The TAM on the semi-trucks, it's just that that's a category that everybody forgets to even take into consideration. And of course, I hope I hope and believe that maybe they'll be shooting for a million semi-trucks a year, which would be a, a, a huge, massive, that'd be an Apple, that'd be an Apple computer, an Apple uh, profit per year all by itself. Um, all of those things are going to be just exploding in the future years. It's just a matter, I guess, of how fast Elon wants to uh, expand. That's really pretty much it. Okay, that's all I got for you right now. Let me know in the comments below what you think. It has been, oh, uh, a couple of thoughts. Just before I go, like, subscribe, and notify, Patreon, all that stuff. Patreon, come on, Patreon, come on. We hit the 300. <laughs> it's time to join Patreon. Okay, and then um, uh, yesterday, CERN Basher. I mean, seriously, you didn't. You guys didn't watch that. Not very many of you watched it. I don't know why. He's talking about Crypt, uh, yeah, cryptocurrencies, which is esoteric and weird. And, you know, a lot, I even agree. I haven't read the book yet. It's still sitting on my shelf that that uh, one of the um, members, one of the people that follow me sent me that book about about uh, cryptocurrencies anyway. But this is more specific, specifically, this is about how you're going to be using these as a security device. It's very interesting. And I'm going to put the card up again. Okay, because you need to go back. You really, really need to watch that. That was a fantastic, fantastic. It's not that long. And I think you will you will go, oh my gosh, something that you never thought heard of anywhere else but here on this show. It's been great talking to you. <laughs>